Hey friends, I'm currently teaching a course in evolutionary biology, and one of the things I routinely do is give my students papers from the primary literature to read. And a couple of weeks ago, I gave them two papers and let them choose which one they wanted to do. Uh, one of them was about the turtle genome and the evolution of the turtle genome. And the other one was about the evolution of tail weaponry in amniotes. Guess which one the students chose? They chose the turtle genome one. I don't know what's going through their heads. But anyway, they were both good papers, and I'll, I'll admit the turtle genome paper was a bit more meaty. It had a lot more substance to it, and so made for a better paper for an hour-long discussion, so I can't blame them. But still, ever since, there has been this itch to discuss this cool paper on tail weaponization. And hey, I've got this handy outlet here, a camera. I can talk to a camera. So I thought today I would discuss this particular paper and see what you all think about it. Okay, if you're familiar with Gary Larson and the Farside cartoon, you know where this term came from. Uh, the cartoon features a caveman lecturing to his colleagues pointing to the tail end of a stegosaur and saying, now this end is called the thagomizer after the late Thag Simmons. It's become an in accepted informal term for the elaborate tail weaponry of some large vertebrates. Now, one question you might ask is, where have all the thagomizers gone? It doesn't seem to be quite as popular anymore. Animals still fight, they still put on courtship displays, but if they're going to do it with combat, they tend to favor horns and antlers and head bunting and biting and clawing, which seems riskier to me. Why bash up the end of the animal with the brains when you could be bumping butts? Tail weapons haven't totally gone away, but they seem much more diminished in extant species. So here's a cladogram of extant species with tail weapons of one sort or another. A couple of things to note are that the clades that exhibit this property are fairly diverse. Examples are found in aardvarks, porcupines, pangolins, and several species of reptiles. These are features that have apparently evolved independently in multiple lineages. So the principle of tail weaponry isn't dead. But you know, these aren't particularly impressive examples of a thagmizer. In some cases, it's just a matter of having a large muscular tail that you can whip about. Not to belittle these developments, I'd rather not get slapped by a crocodile or a porcupine, but still, when compared to the majestic maces of yore, they are a bit disappointing. So look at some of these older examples. Now we're talking about good old brute savagery. These animals had spikes on their tails or massive bony clubs. You'd be dead if these beasts whacked you. So it's with some relief that I can say they're all extinct. Look at the stegosaur. This is the classic thegomizer. At the end of its tail, it has four long pointy spikes that it could flail at you. Each of those spikes can be almost a meter long. Now that's an impressive weapon. Or here's Glyptodon, if you prefer extinct mammals. Unlike Stegosaurs, Glyptodon lived at the same time as early humans. And so, some people might have suffered thagmization from the stiff, bony tail this armored mammal hauled around. It's only fair, since it went extinct as humans moved in, so some people might have dined on Glyp Glyptodon steaks. One of my favorites are the Ankylosaurs. No spikes in their tails, just the ugly simplicity of a massive bony club. I mean, look at these things. They're just crude, heavy, fugly lumps intended for smashing things. It's easy to focus on just these obvious aspects of tail weaponry, but there's got to be more to them than that. Mice don't have thagomizers, for instance. Why? Elephants and rhinos are big and dangerous, but their tails have been reduced to pathetic threads that couldn't carry an effective thagomizer. Why? One of the things we might ask are, what correlated traits are associated with the evolution of a thagomizer? What are the prerequisites to evolving tail weaponry? And that's where this paper comes in. Arbor and Zano take a systematic approach to identifying the morphological 
and behavioral traits associated with all these beasts that carry expensive tail weaponry. And they ask, what additional features do we find in common between them? They make this lovely Venn diagram that illustrates the traits associated with tail weaponry. So, for example, stegosaurs, ankylosaurs, and glyptodonts all also have osteoderms, ossified nodules in their skin that forms a kind of armor. We might expect that osteoderms came first, that the ancestors to these animals evolved the capability to toughen their skin with dermal bone, which could then be adapted to an extreme to form enlarged bony thickenings in their tails. Therefore, one prerequisite for tail weapons is bony armor in the skin. Another prerequisite is that you have to be above a certain size. The criterion in this paper is above 100 centimeters in length. And this also makes sense. Why don't mice have thagomizers? Because they're not big enough to have the mass that would make them effective. A third criterion is thoracic stiffness. That is, the vertebrae have to be reinforced to make for a more rigid structure. And that also makes sense. You can't have a floppy body if you're going to be waving around a massive club or a mass of spikes. And that explains why we don't have animals with big thagomizers trundling about the landscape anymore. It takes a combination of features that are not present in extant animals. We need a big herbivore. Okay, we have those that have bony armored skins and a long tail that is similarly armored. Unfortunately, cows don't meet the requirements. No armor and their tails are pathetically rope-like. Sorry world, I think the first step is going to be that we have to generate armored cows. Then we can think about beefing up those tails and then Maybe we can genetically engineer the bovine thagomizer in honor of the dearly departed Thag Simmons. It'll make milking cows much more exciting. <laughs>